You watched a piece by Professor Alison Rice. She, she's both an academic and, and a TV presenter, uh, quite well known on television. Um, she states that creationism has no place in science education. Now you yourself are a scientist, you, you work in medical research. How do you respond to her categoric statement Creation has no place in science education. It should not be there in schools. Mm. Um, I think it's a very dangerous statement from her because first this is a free country, right? And we still have the freedom of believe whatever we want. And we still have the freedom to teach to our children whatever we believe in. Uh, moving into a full position where the government, for example, is going to... Um, force any school to teach the evolution and drop the creationism, this is going to create big issues, for, especially for faith schools. And I think we need to have a certain position regarding to this. It's not just allowed us what Professor A or Professor B or Scientist A or Politician B to tell us what we should believe or we should teach to our children. Um, as a Christian, I think we have the duty to um, actually respond and, and reply to these people and say, no, we have a strong position regarding to these beliefs. This is our principles and this is in what we believe and I think we need to be firm. She, she's not worried about principles, is she? She's saying it's fine for creation to be discussed in a religious education class, but science is based on evidence and how can you use ancient texts as mm. evidence? Well, when I, when I heard that, I think she, in a very short sentence, killed all possible history in the world. Because if we think about history itself, it's made of ancient manuscripts. So this means that everything we have, for example, on the British mu Museum, is not worth for her, because it's ancient manuscripts. So straight away I think this is very bad and the historical view, not just Christian, but the historical view. History in this world is made of manuscripts, right? However they are on a wall, however they are in scrolls. So I think she went a bit too far. Uh, another thing is, I think she's a true, she talks what she believes and she is convinced this is the right thing to do. I'm not questioning the, the lady scientific skills or anything, but uh, it is clear that she doesn't have a Christian view. Everything is based in facts. And uh, actually evolution is based in certain facts, but is not, there is not a continuing line. Uh, evolution theory is a theory full of holes where you don't know how it went from this point to this point full of question marks, right? And that's worse than any scrolls or any um, documents, ancient scripts, because it's everything written how it happened. So you would argue that there ought to be a scientific debate in the school classroom, in the science classroom, that includes evolution, that includes creation as a possibility, uh, and, and let the children make up their mind. Well, that's a very good point because, uh, of course, you cannot just teach the, the children what is in the Bible. It's good as well the children, especially the mature ones, to know what is, what uh, after all is evolution. What is the evolution theory? It's based in what? And uh, God gave us brains for us to make our decisions and think in what we want to believe. You cannot approach a person who believes in evolution uh, we don't know what is evolution theory. That would be ridiculous. You need to know about the theory. So I think if we are preparing future Christian, the, the next generation, the next Christian uh, generation of Christians, I think you need to prepare them uh, and teach them they are different ways to see things, but uh, what is based on the Bible and what is based in secular theories that they are theories still. You, you are 
a fairly eminent scientist in, in your field. Um, you're head of your department, you're doing research, you're traveling the world with this research. Don't you think that somehow you shut off part of the scientific part of your brain in order to be following these ancient texts? Because you know, the, the general principle, you look at the world, you look at all the TV programs, you look at the textbooks, they're all saying, we all know now that evolution is the way that we've developed. We may not understand everything about it, but in the future we will. And just the Bible account has less and less credibility. Aren't, aren't you just switching off part of your brain, ignoring the evidence? Uh, you mean the evidence of evolution, you mean? Um, I have thought about it for a long time, because I have been in science for a long, and science for a long time, and uh, many times, of course, I, I had people coming to me based in evolution, this, this and that. And especially because if you are in chemistry or if you are in the engineer, you don't have so much this problem. But once you go into biology, any subject that is related to biology, you already know that you will have evolution theory knocking on your door. So in my research, because I work in research with proteins and genes and everything, everything is connected on a textbook from evolution. So if we have, for example, if we talk a certain disease that has mutated, straight away I know people are going to say this is because of evolution. If I want to work in a protein that we have in our brains, but actually the same protein has a certain function that is the same function in another organism, like, um, for example, a monkey or any mammalian organism, but then we find out that that protein actually exists as well in a bacteria. Straight away they said, well, because has was already on the bacteria, but then through the evolution has been kept through the uh, line and we still have it. But for example, doesn't have any function. It has it in bacteria, but doesn't have in us. So they explain this has been through evolution. I see this in a totally different way. Uh, you know, we have been created from a single creator. So he thought, let's do these things, and for some reason, um, our genes over the year for that particular protein, um, they don't have any reason to exist. So they have been uh, silent, they have been switched off. It's there, but it's n you never have the, the gene expressing into a protein. So it, this is a bit complicated, you need to understand a bit of biochemistry, but yes, my colleagues will say straight away and many times I sit down with them and they said, oh, this is because of the evolution, so it happened on this way. That's why the protein now is behaving this way and not that way, because we have this same protein in human brain, but at the same time we have it in bacteria or in other archaea, and that's another kingdom. And of course, archaea is even back. So, and so what you're looking at, in a sense, is that you look at the same data as your evolutionary biased colleagues but you interpret it with a creation bias yes because i think i create i believe in evolution right uh, but not the same way as they do they they believe that everyone had came from a single cell and we involved on that thing we have involved but not from one organism to another organism the right word would be we adapt uh, uh, in a sense when people saying, oh, the human race is involved, I said, no, actually, we have more and more disease. We are live longer, but with more disease and more things are appearing and that we didn't have it. So, and if evolution is really true, um, so evolution, according to the theory, has happened based in mutations, right, and survived the best ones. So why are we still here? And, uh, and another thing is, at some certain point, there was a set of conditions, right, in this planet, according to evolution, that was the right conditions for the existence of life on the, under this planet. So why this didn't happen in another planet? Uh, doesn't mean that another creatures in another planet will be like us, but uh, could happen on the same lines and at the moment we don't have there is no clue or existence of any form of life in any other planet at least on this system solar system so 
there is a lot of things that actually evolution is, cannot explain. When I look into, I see actually God's uh, work on it. It's really amazing. And this sometimes is difficult for no scientists or no biochemists to understand that. Because we are so complicated, we are so simple and so complicated at the same time that it's very difficult for me to understand why we evolved in one direction and not in another direction.